If you know a bit about the Bible, you know that the Old Testament was written in Hebrew for the most part, and the New Testament was written in Greek. But things are actually a little bit more complicated than that. In the ancient world, the empire of Alexander the Great in the fourth century BC changed everything. Through his empire and the successor empires run by his generals and their descendants, Greek culture became dominant throughout the Mediterranean world. And the Greek language became the lingua franca, the international language of that part of the world, like English is an international language today. Now add to this the fact that the Jews didn't simply stay in the Holy Land, but had a significant diaspora outside of the Holy Land, in places like Persia and the Arabian Peninsula and Alexandria, the greatest city of Greek Egypt. They were a very significant minority in that city from its founding on. And as they began to thrive in that place and settle down, they began to lose facility with the Hebrew language. But rather than cast their beloved Torah aside, what they did was to translate it into Greek. This translation was known as the Septuagint, and it became important far beyond Alexandria. Wherever Jews were active in Greek-speaking areas, the Septuagint is found. And it's the Septuagint that the New Testament writers quote whenever they quote the Old Testament, as they so often do. It's not that they have a Hebrew Old Testament in front of them and come up with a translation for themselves. No, they quote from a translation that is already available. And you can imagine how useful this Greek translation is for Christian evangelists. Think of St. Paul trying to form and shape a church of Gentiles. In order for them to fully appreciate who Christ is, they need to understand the Old Testament. But they're probably not going to learn Hebrew, so what do you do? You get them to read the Septuagint. That's how St. Paul is able to refer so easily to the Old Testament when he's writing to Gentile Christians. It's because they've been studying their Septuagint. In this exhibition, there are many precious fragments of the Greek Old Testament on display. And in this cabinet, we have a selection arranged by theme, highlighting some of the female characters and feminine themes in the Old Testament. So we have Sarah and Hagar, for example, and Tamar and Dinah. And then we have images of childbirth and labor applied both to Israel and to the God of Israel. These characters and images are part of the long beloved tapestry of the Hebrew Bible. But in this Greek translation, they become available far beyond the people of Israel in the international language of the day.